Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for today, I'm just going to look at a quick example of how to do a tabular work to put in your portfolio. Alright, so I'm going to start by making up some simple information. Um, So it's Knowledge Center High is the name of the school. Um, Is it 2019 as we're not yet in December all right so I gave a space here to indicate you know we have me space between mean and sub and sub and the body so I have one space here to indicate that now sometimes we're given um, like a specific question and you are required to use a specific um, cell if that is given then you can't do it like this all right but for the purpose of your portfolio, we're just going to be using it like this. Alright, and then I'm going to make up some simple information here. So it's a report, so we have the subject. Term grade. Average. Alright, I'm gonna widen this to get some space in and not for everything not to be too clustered on the on the page. We're just going to do four subjects and just randomly place some grades here. Persons normally have problems with math, so let me do that. So to do the average, it is equal average. All right, this here I can select it. So it's equal average, open bracket, and I want average for term and exam. So I select that, close my bracket, and press enter. And that's the average. I'm going to use something known as autofill, right, to fill the rest of the cells below and this is the fill handle here this black box to the bottom right i'm gonna put the cursor over it until it changes to a black plus sign all right and i'll drag it down all right so all the information has been carried this formula has now been carried to if you look up here the same formula has been carried to the other cells all right in IT that is known as relative referencing. Okay, so this is to so everything here is to one decimal place. Let me just highlight everybody, put everything to two decimal place. Alright, so this here, these are the items for increase and decrease decimal. Alright, so I'm gonna add some more. So 
I press start and everything now has two decimal places. That's what I want. I'm going to take this over to the center a bit right, for it to look more tidy on the page. I'm looking at the space before it and it can really go over some more. So I use these two alignment icons. All right, increase indent and decrease indent icon. All right, I normally just press. All right, so I press the increase indent and it brought it over to the right. Now, words are always left aligned and numbers are always right aligned. Realize all the numbers, for example, automatically goes to the right as I type them in. I didn't put them there. That's how the, um, the software reads it. Now, the numbers here are to the right, which should not be. To the left, rather, which should not be. All right, so I'm going to put that to the right. And then I'm going to use my icon to get it over to the center. All right. Now, this will, so when we do that, everything is aligned, decimal place and everything. You will not see the change or see the greatness in what I just did because everything has the same amount of digits. All right? But if you follow what I just said a while ago, you will understand it when you're typing a document that has um, four or more digits. All right? Not with a decimal sign, before the decimal all right, and when it, everything has two digits, the same amount of digits, you can just press center. All right, so let's fix up this. We're going to merge and center the heading. So select that, and I'm going to change the font. All right, so I'm going to put that in maybe something larger, like a 14. Right, um, it looks like I can put it in all caps. Let me put that in all caps so that it's a main heading. Right. That looks a bit better. I'm going to merge and center this, and we come over as far as the rest of the table. We don't go over to where the table is not. All right, I'm going to select mark and center. All right, and I'm going to put this in bold. All right, and I can underline it and take off the bold if you so desire, or we can do both. All right, so I have a space in here, one space between main and sub, and three between sub and the body. I did not have to do it like that. I could have extended. Let me just do it with this one. Extended my column. Right, my row height rather for it to be like this and then I could have let me get rid of this and show you what I'm talking. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna press delete and I'm gonna take it up. Alright. Alright. So I could have okay, so that looks okay. Alright. Or if I want I could have taken out the other one. And then this, I just put it center or to the top. So it takes it away from the rest of the table. All right, and I could have removed this one as well. And between the main and the sub, I put some more space here. And then this, I put it center to the top. Or center, center. All right, so that's the so you see, it has some space between and some space between. All right, so those are okay now. I'm going to bold these headings and I'm going to put the term exam and average in vertical headings. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to format cells. Let's load in. When I go there, I'm going, I can choose between vertical or oblique heading. I'm going to go to alignment and I can choose between vertical, which is at 90 degrees, or oblique, which is at 45. But for this video, I'm going to select vertical heading and press OK. And there you have it. All right, I'm going to put them in this. And they're moved to the center. 
the next thing I need to do is to sort my data in alphabetical order. I'm going to highlight the entire table except for the headings and I'm going to go to the ribbon to the sort and filter icon. I'm going to select the down arrow. I see sort A to Z or sort Z to A. I'm going to select A to Z. And my information has now been sorted in alphabetical order. Alright, so another thing that I'm going to teach you to do is to add your name to the document. So I'm going to go on insert and I'm going to go over to header and footer. Alright, so the header is now open automatically to the center. But I'm going to write the name of the document to the left. And my name, right? It says Ariel Shirley's report, so I'm going to write Ariel Shirley. Shirley's name. Alright, and that is it. So I can come out of the header. Alright, so we're going to go to print preview to see how the table currently looks on the page. As you can see, it's positioned at the top left. Looking at the margin, left versus right so it's at the top left of the paper all right we would like it to be centered vertically and horizontally so we want it in the center of the paper all right let's do that all right so we're going to go to page layout margins custom margins you see center on page we're going to select horizontally and vertically and press OK. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to do is to fix these headings a bit. Alright, they're currently centered, right, but at the bottom. So I'm going to put them center, center. Alright, so that they're centered better on the page. And then this heading here, I'm going to put left aligned, but I'm going to put it left aligned to the center. The first column, that heading is normally left aligned. While I can put the others in center alignment, the first one is normally left aligned, and then we can put it to the center. Alright, so that is it. And that's looking like it. Alright, let's go to print preview for the final look. And there you have it everyone. Alright, your tabular work for your portfolio. Alright, so this is what the teacher will look at and mark. Checking to ensure that it is sorted, to ensure that the data is correct, that is there, and that your headings are correctly laid out, your main and your subheading, right? And that if it is that it's the center style and you have more than four, four or more digits, that a comma is there between. And if it is that you're doing it in the block style, that you have a space. All right, guys, I do hope this bit you found this video um, educational. Right, if you like it, please give it a big thumbs up. Please share with your other classmates or colleagues. Right, and also, please, I'm asking you, subscribe to the channel so you do not miss another upload. Thanks for watching, and see you in my next video.